So you're thinking of moving to London. Well, this is my part two about things you should know before you do. We'll go over friends, we'll go over dating, we'll go over food, and we'll go over transport and many more. So stick around to the end. All right, there's an elephant in this room and it is the weather. Now, what do you think the weather is like in London? Well, you're not wrong. <laughs> it is quite gray and there is a bunch of rain, but how much rain is there? London actually has less average annual rainfall than New York, Miami, Amsterdam, Rome, and Sydney. Now, that doesn't mean it doesn't rain, it still rains a whole bunch, but it drizzles more. So we have far fewer uh, clear days, a lot of days are overcast and there's like fine rain, whereas in other places, like in Miami, it will rain like crazy, it'll bucket down. So Miami actually has three times as much annual rainfall as London, but they also have far more blue skies. So if you don't mind a bit of gray sky, London is well climatized to you. It also gets pretty humid in London, and uh, if you're going on the tube a lot, uh, I would recommend having a scarf or some kind of jacket that is easy to put on and take off because being in the tube, it the temperatures soar, and you don't want to be sweating bullets on the tube and then go outside and be cold and have the wind chilling you. It's not a good soup for good health. Let's talk about transport in London. So you can get an Oyster card or you can just use your contactless UK bank card. Now using your contactless UK bank card for things like the bus or for things like the underground is the best plan. So that's a top tip. Don't get an Oyster card, don't pay for the monthly things, just get the a contactless bank card. You can get it on Apple Pay or Android Pay on your phone or Google Pay on your phone as well. And then you can just touch in and touch out using that same card because it caps. So there's a weekly cap and there's a monthly cap. So if you end up going over, over the number of trips, then you won't pay more than that ceiling, either the weekly ceiling or the monthly ceiling. Alternatively, you could buy monthly packages with an Oyster card, but then if you have a month where you're not traveling that much, then you've lost that money. So using a contactless card is the cheapest way to travel in London. Even cheaper is to get a bike. <laughs> now, London is far more bike friendly than it used to be. You'll see at the end of the word day by the traffic lights, basically a bicycle traffic jam, which is kind of heartwarming to see because it is changing the pollution dynamics in this city. So there are right to work schemes. If you're moving to London and getting employment with a with a company, you can uh, you can actually get the company gets tax breaks and uh, they'll help pay off your bicycle. So that is something worth noting. You can uh, if you work from home and you're self employed, you probably won't need to travel that much. Uh, but getting a bike to get around to get to the grocery store to go for the meetings or to just sightsee or just hang out around London is a great idea. You can also use what they call here Santander cycles. So it's sponsored by Santander. It used to be called Boris Bikes when Boris Johnson wasn't the Prime Minister but was the Mayor of London and uh, he did a bunch of goofy stunts to promote these bikes but they are cool. So you basically you pay two pounds for every for 30 minute cycle and if you go over that 30 minutes and you haven't docked the bike again, you pay another two pounds. But the little hack there is make sure you don't go over that 30 minutes. Find another docking station before the 30 minutes, dock the bike, and then wait a minute or two, take out another bike, and go along your way again. So it is possible for two pounds to use a bike all day, day in, day out. But depends how much you use the bike over a year, it's probably cheaper to buy a bike from Facebook Marketplace or eBay or something along those lines than to be spending through Santander cycles. Now, my least favorite tube line. So they all, oh, the tube map might look a bit intimidating, but once you've had a good look at it, you probably will get the hang of it. It is not that complicated. There are a few big stations at which you will need to uh, change tube lines sometimes. So you might need to take, for example, the Grey Line, the Jubilee Line to London Bridge, and then from London Bridge change onto a different train on the Northern Line to get up to Old Street, for example. King's Cross has loads of lines connecting to it. Uh, Waterloo is a great big connector as well. Paddington is very good as well. If you're flying into London, 
quite likely you'll fly into Heathrow. And if you're flying into Heathrow, do not take the Heathrow Express. The Heathrow Express basically is a, it's a faster train into Paddington, but it's way more expensive than taking the regular train from Heathrow to Paddington. That one takes a bit longer, but is much cheaper. So that's my recommendation. Unless you're in a massive rush, don't take the Heathrow Express, just take the regular train from Heathrow to Paddington. For the other airports, there are loads of airports around London. There's Stansted, Luton, Gatwick, South and Heathrow. So there's loads of different airports that you might arrive into. Gatwick and Heathrow being the two biggest ones. There's City Airport as well, but that's mainly focused on European travel. Now, if you're going to any of those other airports like Gatwick, like Luton, like Stansted, quite often the cheapest way to get into the city is to take a bus. Now to take a bus, you can, you can buy tickets at the bus stop, but they'll generally be a bit more expensive. So if you plan things out a little bit ahead of time, go online. Quite often the cheapest tickets available are from EasyBus, easybus.com. They have their own buses, but they also sell tickets for National Express. So National Express might be selling tickets on their site for eight pounds or 10 pounds, but you might be able to find the same ticket for four pounds or five pounds on EasyBus's website. So I'll put that link down below as well. Now, my least favorite line on the underground is the central line. So the central line is the red line and it's red because it's bloody hot. You will lose weight going on the central line, guaranteed. <laughs> so if you're looking for weight loss advice, that is the train line to take. It's super uncomfortable. I never like being on that train line. My favorite line is the Victoria line. It's the light blue one, it goes, or through loads of the major areas like King's Cross, Oxford Street, ends up in Brixton. I love that one because it's super quick. I also like the district and the circle lines, the yellow and the green ones, because those are newer trains, wider trains. There's more space in them. You feel less, less confined. And they're also not underground the whole time. So don't be alarmed if you're on one of those. It's called the underground, but it's not necessarily underground. Now, London is a massive city, so it can be pretty difficult to find friends, especially after moving here, not knowing anyone. So there's a couple of little sneaky tips. Tip number one is to go on places like Facebook or meetup.com and look for groups for expats that have also just moved here. So that could be Aussies in London, that's a massive one on Facebook, or you can find one for Canadians or Americans or people from all over the show. The next best thing is to go up on Meetup again and look for language exchange nights out. So you would go to a bar, everyone there would be pretty new to London most probably, they would be from different countries, and you can just chat and meet new people, and maybe pick up a little bit of a different language as you go as well. So those are two really handy tips. And then bonding over shared interests. So for example, I really like calisthenics, workouts. So if I can go to one of the many outdoor gyms, I'll probably meet other guys that are interested in that kind of stuff too and you can bond over that shared experience. Or again, you can go on to say Facebook or to Meetup and find groups. For example, groups that like ballroom dancing or groups that like playing poker. You know, you can find those groups on Facebook uh, join and then they often have you know nights out that they organize and that's a great way to to make new friends or to meet new people well the easiest way to meet new people in London is probably through work and you know you meet your colleagues and then you go out for after work drinks with them and then you meet their friends and that's probably the easiest way but if you're working from home then some of the other tips that I've mentioned are probably the best bet finding those groups on Facebook or meetup.com bonding over shared experiences and learning new skills like learning ballroom dancing you'll probably meet the people that are also doing that and that's a really cool social way to hang out and when getting around London because it's so big and things take longer than expected I like to give myself 10 or 15 minutes in addition to what Google Maps or City Mapper say the journey duration will be because you never know if there's a slight problem or a slight delay or people are walking slow in front of you so that little leeway really helps a lot and what is really key is to check that the tube is running because quite often they have engineering works and that can really can ruin your day. Basically, you won't get to that business meeting or you won't get to that friend's party because you think you need to take a certain line and that line is not running that day. 
There will be buses operating uh, in between those lines, but it will take way longer to get anywhere. So it's always good to really plan your journey before you leave. Don't just leave the house thinking, oh yeah, it's gonna be fine, especially on the weekends, because that's when they have all the engineering works. So when things get a little too loud and a little too crazy in the city, all you gotta do is come into one of London's many green spaces. So we were just in Clerkenwell, walking the streets there, lots of traffic, lots of noise literally hop over onto a little side street get into this really quiet little square nice green open space and uh yeah these little green spaces make london one of the greenest cities in the world so top tip feeling the rush of the big city life just hop into one of london's many green spaces and that's not including like hyde park or any of those huge parks like victoria park there's loads of little green spaces dotted all over the city as well so that's one of the things i love about the city so those iconic black london taxis now those are amazing to drive in i was always obsessed with them growing up uh, especially when i moved to london and they are great like those taxi drivers have to do a test uh called the knowledge and they have to study for it they have to learn loads and that actually changes the pathways in their brain relating to direction so those guys directions they know what they're doing but now they are under quite a lot of pressure from ride sharing apps is difficult because they are more expensive than ride sharing apps so the competition has changed the pricing obviously it is much easier to become an uber driver than it is to become a black taxi driver because you don't have to do the same training but gps is getting better and better and better and at some point they are going to be fully automated cars and self-driving cars so it's tricky. I do love London taxis, black London cabs, but a little tip for you if you want to go in them, pre-book them in advance. There are apps like Get, G-E-T-T, -T, and you can pre-book a London taxi just as you would book an Uber, effectively, and that is lower than just hailing a black taxi on the street. That will cost you the most. So use Get instead of hailing a taxi on the street. Okay entertainment in london now obviously london is home to the west end for theaters and musicals and it's got beautiful cinemas and it's got all these amazing nightlife activities bars restaurants cafes pubs the british in general have quite a big after work drinking culture so if you're walking through soho you'll often see loads of people out in the pubs there or pretty much anywhere in london you'll see people out in the pubs even during the week um, especially on Friday evening and that's kind of cool but the thing you must be wary of is that the cost of alcohol is very high so lucky for me I don't drink because if I did I probably would not have the money to you know put into my investments or my business ideas or my music or any of those things so yeah if you think about it not drinking will save you a ton in this city the price of food is is pretty good. There's quite a lot of competition in terms of groceries from all the big supermarket chains like Sainsbury's, Tesco, Little, Aldi, Morrison's, etc., etc., Marks and Spencer's, Waitrose. Waitrose is considered the most one of the most expensive ones, but you can often get deals there. Sometimes carrots are cheaper at Waitrose than they are at Tesco, for example. So it's nice to live in an area where you can shop around at the different ones, but Truth be told, most of the shopping I do is online. You can find, you can get deliveries for the things that you want from Tesco, you can get that once a month, and you can get the things that you want from wherever, Waitrose once a month, and balance it out like that. So that's pretty handy. And actually, more and more, I find myself using Amazon Fresh. I'll put the link in the description below, but that way you get the benefit of Amazon, who are so great with delivery and all that kind of stuff and you can have a huge selection as well. So I wonder how Amazon Fresh is actually cutting into the profits of these uh, online delivery supermarket chains. So we'll, we'll see what happens in the future. But I'll put the link down for Amazon Fresh. You guys can get a bit of discount that way if you are so inclined. If you're looking to make a romantic friend, then, then signing up for a dance class might be a good idea. You'll meet some people that may become romantic friends. Uh, and if you don't want to use the many dating apps, you could also go to, like I said, those language exchange things. Those language exchange things are great because loads of people that have just moved here and don't have big social networks, yeah, they're here already. Otherwise, you can use online dating apps. I mean, that's how I met my fiance uh, after 10 years of being single in London. So 
dating apps definitely work. Although, we'll probably have to make up a more exciting story for our future grandkids. The London restaurant scene is amazing. Pretty much every type of food that you can think of, you can get. And it's actually not that expensive. Like I said, if you don't order the, the alcoholic beverage with it, it is much cheaper. So, you know, maybe have a drink at home and go out for a nice dinner, have a nice glass of water <laughs> with dinner. If you are trying to be a bit more conscious about your money, you need some extra funds to invest to maybe put down a deposit for a house or some other kind of cool investment like that. It is, uh, it is a better idea to not go too crazy with the drinks at the restaurants. Now here's another little top secret tip. There is a site called First Table. First Table have loads of participating restaurants and they are good restaurants. Like my favorite restaurant in London is a place called Pureza, plant-based pizza. And, uh, and they're on this First Table site too. And basically the business model is you pay First Table. I think it's, you pay five pounds to First Table on the website and that's for two people to go and dine at a specified time at one of the restaurants you choose and then you get 50% off. So you still get to go to some of the best restaurants, uh, but you only pay 50% off. What that might mean though, is you have to go there at 6.30 p.m. instead of the peak time, 8.30 p.m. But it's London, so the place is gonna be pretty buzzy anyway at 6.30 p.m. or five o'clock on a Saturday, the times it's basically just off peak dining, but you get a really good deal and amazing food. So I'll pop that link down in the description as well. First table, I'm so happy I found first table. They're amazing. <laughs> Click the link in the description to get four free stocks from Weeble. So that's basically free money, which is amazing if you're in the US. If you're not in the US, click the link for Trading212 and get a free stock over there. Now make sure you crush the like button and subscribe. I'm posting new videos on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Now watch these videos next. I'll see you in there. Let's hustle together.